I want to talk to you about a fundamental that I think is really, really, really neglected and it's not often talked about. You see, there's so many great coaches out there, but not a lot of coaches refer to, I would say, mindset as a core part of the way that the dancer improves. I like what George Bernard, Bernard Shaw said about 18th century, uh, famous, famous playwright. The only thing that separates the pig from a man is his ability to think. And that's true. And I have a little diagram here that I'm gonna show you uh, a way of acting in the world that's gonna help you do what I suppose the, the modern new age thinking is to conceive, then believe and achieve it, right? So how do we do this? Because visualization is one of the biggest keys for you as a dancer to improve. And you might think, what has this got to do with dancing? I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just dancing. I want to improve my technique. I want to improve my balance, my coordination, my posture, my partnership skills. And how do I get things to practice? Well, that's what the other sessions I do are for, to give you real world practical advice on how to do things based on personal experience, based on working with the best coaches in the world. But there is a section missed that no coach would refer to me about, yet it is the foundation and the fundamental of how champions and people who stay in the game, it is something different that they have. You know, I think that if coaches understood this and the dancers understood this and that you understood this, you're going to last longer, you'll be happier with what you do, you'll actually get more from yourself because at the end of the day, what you think determines what you do in your life. So if you're liking the message today so far, give me a like or a share and a shout out. Make sure you tag someone in this post. Now I'm gonna bring this diagram up to the full screen. Bear with me one mo while I figure this out. Here we go. Okay, so if you have a look at this diagram here, it might be hard if you're on a mobile device, but the top half of this circle, this uh, represents your thoughts. Now the diagram itself looks a little simplistic, but this is something I teach my coaching clients and outside of board dancing, like I focus heavily on coaching mindset, performance in life, and transformation. So really how to reinvent yourself to become the person you need to be to achieve the goals that you need to achieve. And so thoughts are where it starts. That's the starting point. And underneath that bottom half of the circle, we have feelings. Underneath those feelings, the bottom half represent actions. So let the stick man represent how you operate. There's a power that flows to and through you, and you get to think any thought that you choose to think. So are you thinking disempowering thoughts or are you thinking empowering thoughts? Now, I like to think of these thoughts as a stream, a river, if you will, and you are a bystander watching the stream go by and you can have the ability to choose what you pull out of the stream. Do you pull out some nice fish to eat? Do you allow the uh, big lugging chunk of rock to just sit there, which is your weight of negative emotion? Do you pick that one up and carry that with you as a, as a weight of burden? Or do you allow, allow it to just stay there? Or do you let the trunks of, and the sticks and branches float down the stream? You get the choice of what you pull out of the stream. And that's the best way I can think about, I've thought about this for a long time, that's the best way I can help people conceptualize your thoughts as they flow to and through you. Now you get a choice on what you think about. So I think one of the important things for us all to grasp, because every time I go through this, uh, it changes my perspective on things. It changes the way I like to look at things and it changes how I do life. So if we've got a thought power flowing to and through us, we get to think what thoughts we decide upon. We also get to choose the thoughts. Therefore, we get a choice on how we should act in the world. Now, because of this, I'm gonna deal with the top half of the circle today, our thoughts. But just let's understand that our thoughts, feelings and actions equal our attitude in life and how you do your attitude is gonna determine your altitude. So if we look at it, uh, a, different, a different way now, I'll just take this uh, off the screen. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at visualization in, in a very sort of entry point to make it simple to apply and to do for the next seven days. And so visualization or imagery is a tool that is used by so many people, it's almost ridiculous. Now I've done a lot of research into this. I've read um, PhD theses on imagery and the effect on psychological performance in sport because it seems to be applied a lot in sports. So if you're an Olympian and you weren't visualizing, something's wrong with you. you. You definitely are off track because everyone visualizes, but there's a way to do it and a way not to do it. So stay with me, this is very, very important because regardless of what you think or not, this is not a belief. You are an image maker. You always are in this mindset of, well, not a mindset, you run a movie through your head all the time. Essentially, you narrate your own life in your head constantly. Now, is it empowering or disempowering? Well, that's up to you. You know, we all have um, 
empowering and disempowering thoughts. However, the ones you give the power to are the ones that are going to strengthen your resolve or pull you back and hold you in place. So it's important which ones you choose. Now, if we're looking at visualization, we want to understand that we're looking to visualize using our imagination. You might say, oh, Vaughn, I have a terrible imagination. And I'll say, that's not true. Just like dancing, it might be a weak imagination. You haven't developed it. But your imaging, regardless, how you dress, how you walk, how you talk, how you act in the world is actually reflected from your thoughts. So notice that somebody who starts out dancing, they don't, they don't slick the hair, look at this hair, man. Like, they don't start with the hair like this, you know? They don't start with uh, being okay to wear foundation if they're a man. They don't, they don't wear, I mean, I mean, look, it would be much of a teacher if you weren't wearing like beads, you know, of some sort, right? And 17 rings on your hands. But like, the point is, that image is built over time because you watch other dancers and, and that's sort of how you act in accordance with that environment, it seems that's everyone's doing. If you're a cowboy, you wouldn't be wearing any of that. You'd be wearing a hat, you'd be wearing your, your I don't know what cowboys wear, but like your jeans and your flannelettes, that would be your normal stable attire. Why? Because that's what everyone wears. They don't wear tuxedos to work. So the point is, is that you're image making all the time and it's affected by your environment. Now, when we go to, when we go to improve our dancing, the secret of visualization is to practice your routines in your mind's eye flawlessly, perfect balance. The person you want to become and the person you are going to create within yourself that isn't here today, but will be of the person of tomorrow, your future self. You can create that future self at any given moment. Then you set out an act in accordance with that. So one of the first steps that I'd recommend uh, any client of mine is that we have to set up a lot of parameters for this. We have to set up, okay, we have to orient ourselves in the world. Where are we now? Where are we going? Why do we want to get there? But that takes a respectable amount of time to sometimes get those answers, but it's worthwhile thinking about. In fact, you must have a goal and know what, where you're going. That's very, very important. Now, then we have to make shifts in the way we see ourselves. We have to reimagine ourselves, if you will, and realign ourselves into the person that is capable of making those goals achievable because in the basic moment that we're in right now, we are not, we're not skilled enough. We don't have the correct coordination. We don't have the right technique. We may not even have enough money, may not be in the right location, right? We might not have the coaches. It's one of the reasons I do this show is to give people uh, all over the world who may not have access to this information, access to the information. And the point is, is this, you must see yourself as the person you want to become, not the person you are right now. And that's not to say be bitter, resentful, jealous, or angry about who you are right now and what you've gone through and where you are in life and be regretful that you didn't do things earlier. It's to say that you have a new choice today and you get to choose those thoughts. You get to choose the empowering ones of saying, you know what? I may have come from here. This may be my past. I can't rewrite it, but I can learn from it. Today's a new day. This is how I'm going to go forward. Then you must act in accordance with it. So what does this mean on a tangible sense? It means that Let's just assume for a second that you are a hobby dancer, but you have a goal of wanting to become a competitive dancer. This, this may not apply to everyone, but please understand the principle here. Okay, first thing to understand is that you can't become a competitive dancer be as a hobbyist practitioner. It doesn't work. So what that means now is you have to level up. You have to go, okay, what does a competitive dancer do to become better? Oh, I see, they train more. Well, that's easy to understand, duh, like I've got to train more, okay. I've got to practice a certain way. Oh, they practice differently to turning up to a group class. That's interesting. Okay, what else do they do? You might notice they turn up earlier to class. They warm up. You might notice they stay later. I was always getting kicked out of the studio. I say to dancers, I'm like, you're not really committed until your, your, your teacher started to kick you out and like, get out of the studio, I'm gonna go home. Or like, or, or like begging you for lessons, you know? Um, but the point is, is that you start modeling and seeing that behavior and going, that's what I need to do. Oh, this is interesting. They dress differently, right? Like an amateur dancer, look at them in the studio, right? Look how they, look how they hold themselves. Different posture, right? Different hair. Maybe it's fluffy and it's frizzy, but they've got, a, they've got their training gear on. You know, it's not just like work gear with casual shoes. That's a hobby dancer. And so the point being is that at any point, you get that choice and you can go, you know what? New day, I want something different. The reason this is important is because you are not meant to stay as you are. So orientate yourself to some new direction and then start visualizing that in your mind's eye. Now, let me come back to visualization. Now we know where we're going. Now we know we're, we're getting on track. Stay with me because I know this can be a bit long and everyone gets distracted, but this is very, very important to know. Having the goals just the start, it's not, you know, it's important, but it's not the only thing. You need that orientation. Then you need to change your self-image to act in accordance with that 
uh, goal that you have, so to speak, but you must visualize this person to be real in the mind's eye in the present moment. Your mind doesn't know the difference between real or imagined. That's how powerful our thought is. In fact, science, the latest neuroscience, so far as I can read into the subject, they don't know what consciousness is. Like it's just, no, they're trying to answer it. It's so hard to understand what, what it actually is. The point being is that it is a powerful tool from all the experiments done on visualization, it works. And it works extremely effectively. And you're doing it regardless. Now here's how you do it in a practical sense in dancing. Before I would go to sleep if I had competitions coming up, which was all the time, I would put the music in my ears and I'd start going through my routines one after the other. If I made one single mistake, I would start again. And so in my mind's eye. Now here's the thing, you can image, uh, I think one of three different ways. You've got where you see yourself doing it. So it's like you're a spectator watching yourself. There's uh, seeing it from someone else's perspective watching you. Then there's also seeing it through your own eyes in the world. And so that's the most powerful uh, image making when you are watching through your own eyes and you've actually built the environment in your head, the smell, the, the scent in the air, the feel of the wood on the floor under your feet, the, the energy, the atmosphere, the perspiration, like you feel it. And that type of imagery or visualization is super powerful for bringing the future into the moment. And if you do that with a relatively consistent practice, you're going to find that when you step into the studio, you'll be better. Like it's crazy. Like I've had moments where I haven't trained for a couple of weeks, uh, you know, being away or something like that over holidays and <laughs> come back and I was better because I kept doing this. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like mind blowing. <laughs> this is crazy. I was like, how am I better at practice? Oh, I was mind practicing and mind practicing works. I might use that actually, mind practicing. Uh, so do it, it works. There's lots of studies I can go through to report how important this is. Just take my advice on this. It works, you've got to practice dedicated every day, consistently go through it, see it in your mind's eye as the person you want to become. If this lesson's helped you, let me know. Give me a like, give me a share, give me a shout out. Visit boramastery.com for a little bit more training. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Set yourself a challenge to try it for seven days and see how you go and come back to me and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're already doing this and how to level up from what we've talked about today. But remember, you have a choice and you can go as far as you want to go. I believe that. I think there's only some physical limitations to, to that in the world of dancing. Outside of that though, your mind is limitless. So this has been Vaughn. Awesome to have you here. Put on a little bit of music to go and I will catch you later.